gifts and everybody to the world. I have to say, better get ready. This is Daniel White, the third with the second coming watch update. This is update number 491. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy related headlines, which point towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First up today, according to the Associated Press, the Pentagon says six U.S. F-15 fighter jets have arrived in Lithuania to bolster air patrols over the Baltics as the standoff over Russia's military incursion into Ukraine continues. A U.S. warship is also now in the Black Sea to participate in long-planned exercises. The fighter jets and 60 U.S. military personnel landed at an airbase in Lithuania, adding to the four F-15s and 150 troops already there to do the air patrol mission. The Navy destroyer USS Truxton is participating in exercises with Romania and Bulgaria and is expected to be in the Black Sea for several days. Second today, according to Reuters, China announced its biggest rise in military spending in three years on Wednesday, a strong signal from President uh, Jinping that Beijing is not about to back away from its growing assertiveness in Asia, especially in disputed waters. The government said it would increase the defense budget by 12.2% this year to over $131 billion as China seeks to develop more high-tech weapons and to beef up coastal and air defenses. The increase follows a nearly unbroken run of double-digit hikes in the Chinese defense budget, second only to the United States in size for the past two decades. Within hours of the announcement, officials in Japan and Taiwan expressed disquiet over the absence of any details on how Beijing will spend the money, concerns that uh, have long been echoed in Washington. Third today, according to the Sho Sun Ilbo, North Koreans who converted to Christianity or received money from a South Korean missionary apparently are facing execution. A source said that 33 North Koreans will be executed in a secret cell at the State Security Department on charges of attempting to overthrow the regime by receiving money to set up 500 underground churches. Baptist missionary Kim Jong-wook was arrested in the North last year for allegedly trying to establish underground churches. Many believe, however, that the regime orchestrated all of this on purpose as part of its campaign to ferret out underground churches. A source in China said Kim Jong-wook did not enter North Korea voluntarily, but was kidnapped by North Korean agents. Fourth today, according to Israel National News, the Palestinian Authority complained to the United Nations on Wednesday over what it called Israel's illegal actions at the Temple Mount. A statement posted on the website of the PA's mission to the United Nations said that the PA was particularly concerned by the increasing incursions by Israeli extremists and political leaders, including government officials, on the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. The statement read, These incidents provoke Palestinian and other Muslim worshippers and often lead to clashes in which Palestinian civilians are injured 
tear gassed and detained, the statement said. The PA statement also denounced the recent debate in the Knesset on Jewish access and Israeli sovereignty on the Temple Mount, where Jews are often harassed, arrested, and forbidden to pray. Fifth today, according to the Jerusalem Post, the Washington Institute for Near East Policy is reporting that Cairo is seeking air defense systems such as the advanced S-300 that Syria and Iran have sought. MIG uh, fighter jets and cornet uh, anti-tank weapons which could cause concern for Israel. Uh, despite the fact that Egypt has maintained the peace deal with Israel since 1979, a transfer of such advanced weapons would degrade Israel's uh, qualitative military edge. The report went on to say the strategic cooperation and level of trust between Israel and Egypt, particularly on Sinai, has never been better, but changing the status quo could undermine that trust and perhaps even the Camp David peace treaty. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 3 verses 20, and 21, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Our second coming quote for today is from C.S. Lewis. He said, the doctrine of the second coming is deeply uncongenial to the whole evolutionary or developmental character of modern thought. We have been taught to think of the world as something that grows slowly towards perfection, something that progresses or evolves. Christian apocalyptic thought offers us no such hope. And he is right about that. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. If you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ, dear friend, may I encourage you to get ready today by trusting him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live eternally with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, even so come Lord Jesus. God bless you. Don't let it be said too late.